Hello everyone, I'm the Dallas World Aquarium, my closest, coolest aquarium I like to visit. And I love Paula. I have said this for years, I will never stop saying it. If we could just follow her around with a microphone and just record everything that falls out of her mouth, we would be the benefit because she knows so much. And I hate when we like stop cameras and she just keeps going like, this was good too, that was good too. Oh my God, she's so good. But before we get to her, I just had to put Mila's Reef on the screen, yo. Yes, I am sponsoring this. And when you think about it, with the uh, insane amount of time I've put into this show for the last, I don't know, 84 days planning it. And Jack, of course, has been my co-host the whole time. And I don't know if you, you know, you can't see. Let me try something here and see if you guys can notice any kind of change besides my hair being ridiculous. And I've slept two hours. I lay down for 20 minutes in the heat and couldn't do anything. Do you see how bright this room is? That means the power finally came on. We went 23 hours without power. We've been on generator for 23 hours. We've been on the live stream on a generator with no air whatsoever. And I said, leave it on the generator. Let's make sure they meant it. So we're going to stay connected the way we are. And then when we end this, we'll take a quick break to unplug everything, move things into the wall. Hopefully they'll just keep giving us juice indefinitely and like it's repaired. But oh my God, I might get to feel some air conditioner on my back finally. I just cannot stop sweating. <laughs> <laughs> but um paula thank you so much she's actually in a hotel i don't know where and we're using their wi-fi and we're really really hoping it's going to be sturdy for this and she's got a fantastic presentation for us now paula all i can say is you are one of the cure you are the curator are you a marine biologist i really never memorize who you are i just love you <laughs> so i'm looking at my little don't worry about it don't worry uh, about it so i am a marine biologist you are uh, proud Aggie graduate, oh. um, Gigamax. I see it says um, Tia Davis. <laughs> I am, oh well. It's gone. You know. I'll get you on there. You just keep going. Uh, um, I, my position at the Dallas World of Crime is Director of Husbandry. Okay. Um, so, Thank you. Uh, it's a little bit different. Basically, I do a little bit of everything, and mostly I oversee the aquatic collection at the Dallas World of Crime. Right. Uh, let's get you here. Paula. And I'm actually in Columbus, Ohio. I stole that at, picture from your Facebook. Oh, yeah. At our AZA um, annual meeting, which is a big meeting of all the zoo and aquarium people. Right. Um, Let me check this, too. Yeah, we don't have it on there yet. Just keep going. I'm just cleaning this up because okay. I was gone for a little bit. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I've been at the Dallas World Aquarium now for 28 years. Mm -hmm. um, started there when it, it was a small facility with 8,000 square feet of display space uh, and then I will show you some of the things that we are doing now um, and are you okay Mark <laughs> oh my god I just I cannot I'm so hot I went outside to get some breeze but this has been a marathon of working in just pure heat I mean yeah are such a trooper i was watching the the uh, the weather you know when i took my break i got on my phone and looked and tried to answer the 87 texts i've gotten which had half were my apex and uh <laughs> i was looking at the weather and said okay the coldest point will be 72 degrees yes tomorrow's 97 but we'll be done with this thing at 9 a.m it will never get to 97 and we'll have hung up but we still have to survive living in this mess for another oh, day because they're my gosh. they're my two helpers you know ian and Dwayne. Dwayne are in this, you know, and poor, now Ian has a hotel and they have power and AC, so that's fine. <laughs> we might go camp out in the truck with the AC on, but now I can, I think I'm feeling hints of air. Oh my God. That and that means soon great. the tank will be off life support and it'll be back on the normal circuit. But I just don't want to unplug anything while we're on this live stream right now. I want to get this going and do your presentation, but I'm super okay. happy to get things lined up. Is there anything else you want to say before we put your slides up? No, let's just, let's talk. Um, let's do it. This, this is something that has been in my brain for a really long time. And Mark, you will recall mm -hmm. that I think I did a version of a similar talk at one of the DFW mass meetings that we hosted at the aquarium once okay. upon a time. Yeah, yeah. Today, I wanted to take a, a little more positive spin on my... Uh, preachiness. Mm -hmm. I'll apologize in advance. My father was a preacher. I'm a big talker uh, and I get preachy sometimes. But the truth is, um, 
I honestly don't claim to be an expert on very many things mm -hmm. uh, because truth is there's a million ways to do something uh, really well. And I think today I've been so impressed to hear from the talks that I've been able to uh, listen to today. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought so many of them are applicable to what I wanted to share with you today. So it, it was really great because there's a lot of um, similar threads in yeah. some of the information that I saw today and uh, some people that I had not seen or met before. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really great, Mark. Um, Awesome. To, to hear from some new folks that I haven't had a chance to meet, and I thought it was great. So you can go ahead and advance the slide. Um, I'm, I'm old. Um, I'm actually uh, been doing this since 1986 professionally. Wow. And um, so I'm older than probably most of the people listening in. And um, I've, I've had the great pleasure in my life to be around some really great people. I, I like to say that I lead a gilded life. I somehow end up in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never try to lose sight of that, uh, of how fortunate I am to uh, be able to do what I do and get paid to do it, frankly. Um, but uh, I came back to Texas mm -hmm. after living in Florida. I worked at SeaWorld in Orlando when I started my career. And um, I have the entire time while I have done this, I have uh, raised a family. Um, I now have, between my husband and I, we have five children uh, and nine grandchildren. Wow. Um, and um, I came from a time when um, often you heard that you couldn't do this and, and have a family. So mm -hmm. um, I, I'm living proof that you can. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I never lose sight of the fact of how lucky I am and, and the people who shepherd me along the way. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But okay. basically, you can, get, you can hit the next slide, Mark. These are just some images. If you've never been to the Dallas World Aquarium, uh, we started out as just 8,000 square feet of display space. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's almost a 100-year-old building now is built in 1928 in the wow. historic West End of, the, mm -hmm. of downtown Dallas, Texas. Yeah. And our director had the vision to take an old warehouse and renovate it uh, and make an aquarium. He had made his fortune in the catering business and was wanted originally a place to house his catered events um, and uh, open this facility. He wanted very naturalistic looking exhibits. He wanted them to be, uh, you know, rather than looking into small things, he wanted you to feel as if you were part of the experience. And, mm -hmm. I came on board in 1995, um, and uh, he was in the planning stages of a rainforest exhibit that more than doubled the size of his facility a couple years after I started, and the rest is history. So move on. Um, we have roughly 10 aquarium galleries. Um, those are our, and we'll, I'll, see, I'll show you some closer, more close up pictures later. Mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, they're roughly 2,000 gallons. They're 1,500 gallons uh, and, and a sump. So most of them are roughly 1,500 gallon system. Right. So uh, in some cases, size does matter. Uh, it certainly makes it easier. And that's just one of my cliches that I, I use. But it, hmm. it, it does make things easier in, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, in our Moon Maya exhibit, which opened in uh, 2004, we have some a very large shark exhibit, which you'll see from a different angle in a minute. Okay. And uh, we have a seahorse exhibit. We have what we call our conch exhibit. So we have some Caribbean species in here. And for the first time, we were able to display native species, which is not something that we could do in our main aquarium gallery, which is basically reef aquariums from all over the world. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Okay. Uh, so one of the things I like to say a lot is that cleanliness is next to godliness. And, and when I say this, what I really mean is husbandry matters. Mm -hmm. um, you can get away with it in a lot of, in a lot of cases, if you've got all the right things lined up. Yeah. But at the end of the day, in the business that I'm in, mm -hmm. uh, people are coming, they're paying to come into your facility and they don't understand if you're having a bad day or, 
you're short staffed or whatever, uh, if they can't see through the windows, uh, that's a problem. Right. Um, but that is, you know, we answer to two masters in this business, to the animals and to the people who come in our, our, our door. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, one of the things that uh, is at the forefront of every day is making sure that things look good, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in addition to that, that, um, that the environment that the animals that we keep uh, is healthy and yeah. that, that we're always focused on the welfare of the animals in our care. So um, if you hover over the bottom part of that slide, Mark, yeah. we'll see if the video will run. Okay. Uh, this is how we actually dive uh, to clean our shark exhibit. So uh, we have five divers. You can't see for the plants there that there are some safety divers behind there. And mm -hmm. then you, you're seeing the lower level diver come up. Um, the tunnel is about 40 feet long. Mm -hmm. It's 16 feet across uh, roughly. It's an elliptical shaped tunnel. Yeah. Uh, that exhibit is 21 and a half feet deep and it's home to three very large uh, sawfish, five sandbar sharks, a handful of goliath groupers and a whole school of uh, false pilchards right now. So what was the last uh, it one? Can... False pilchards. What's that? Um, they're uh, a bait fish, basically, uh, oh. similar to a herring or a sardine, but a little bit bigger. And all those guys you just talked about, none of them are human eaters? Well, no. Because um, I but, just want to come so, over there and help. <laughs> <laughs> so this is something that we uh, do. So this is one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken, actually. Uh -huh. One night, I'm, I'm almost always there late, and the lights had been left on uh, from the day, and uh, the sawfish was sitting on the top of the tunnel, and all the sharks were very active, and mm -hmm. it was just beautiful. Um, this is a, a eight-story greenhouse uh, with living plants, huge palm trees, lots of birds flying overhead. Um, uh, and it's roughly meant to uh, represent uh, the Mayan era yes. area and uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, so there's a lot of coral rock work and things like that. It's an absolutely beautiful exhibit, especially in the late afternoons. Yeah. Uh, when the birds are moving in the summer times. It's a beautiful exhibit. Uh, you can move to the next one. Uh, if you hover at the bottom of that, this is one of our male sawfish. Um, one of the things that we're very proud of is the work that we do in conservation for various species within our collection. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I'm very uh, uh, proud to be a part of is uh, we help to establish an International Sawfish Day every year on October 17th mm -hmm. because sawfish are one of the most endangered species of fish in the world for various reasons, uh, but they need help in bouncing back. Mm -hmm. And um, we have some spectacular um, specimens. Our female is huge. Uh, the males and they're, they're now starting to uh, show some reproductive behavior and it's great. Ooh, um, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Do you so, know what to expect? I'm sure you do. Do you end up with a bunch of pups? I mean, are they giving me short well, eggs? Do they cut so, out with their saw? So, so far, <laughs> only one facility in the world has had success in breeding their sawfish and uh -huh. it's a different species. It's the, um, uh, small tooth sawfish, but that's the Atlantis resort in the Bahamas. Yeah. Uh, our, Sawfish are part of a stud book program, mm -hmm. um, used to be a part of a species survival plan and animals are being paired up all over the world, literally to hopefully, uh, be successful. So okay. yeah, it would be, it would be fantastic. Uh, do they this do is the where, same thing though. Do they do the purse like those other sharks? No, the they give live birth. Oh, yeah. wow. That so, would be awesome. You yeah. Do it. Uh, and the pups, their, their little rostra are rolled up and they really? have little leave oh. over them. Yeah, it's spectacular. Um, so this is where patience is a virtue comes mm -hmm. in. Um, I worked in the uh, hobbyist realm for about four years after right. I left SeaWorld and started having babies. Uh, mm -hmm. I worked for my former curator from SeaWorld and his wife who, who uh, he unfortunately passed away very young. Uh, and his uh, his wife is, is a dear friend of mine. 
uh, to this day, and mm -hmm. she works at another aquarium facility. Um, but I loved his approach to his customers in the store because people would come in and they would say, and I and heard several people touch on this today. Mm -hmm. They would say, um, I just, you know, I, I just want this really big tank. I want it to be beautiful. So like when you set it up, I want you to put everything in it. And I really don't want to have to work very hard. And he would look at them and he would say, what's your budget? And he'd say, what size tank, whatever. And he'd give them a, a rough estimate of what that's going to cost. And they would say, you know, well, we've got about $2,000 or $2,500. And this is back in like the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And he would say, well, and you don't want to work for it. You want it right now. You don't want to work for it. They say, yeah. And he'd say, well, right next door, there is an art gallery. Mm -hmm. He said, my recommendation to you is if you don't want to work on it and, and you want everything to look beautiful immediately, then you take that $2,000 or $2,500 you're going to spend on a reef tank mm -hmm. and buy an oil painting and put it behind your couch. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> buy an oil painting of fish and put mm -hmm. it behind your couch because uh, it's cheaper. <laughs> that's not what this is all about, right? Yeah. And uh, so a lot of my early knowledge in this industry came from him and his sort of uh, old school approach to things, which to this day, he's still one of the best aquarists I've ever known. So mm -hmm. um, I owe a lot to him, uh, honestly. Um, but where my patience is running a bit thin mm -hmm. <laughs> as an aquarist is this fish right here on this slide. This is it's such an amazing animal, leafy sea dragon. And right. I have had uh, just the greatest honor in the world to work with these animals mm -hmm. uh, because our director uh, was successful with them when I came on board. Yeah. And we have had lots of what I call near misses, um, mm -hmm. but no success, success as an industry yet in reproducing this particular species. And so this is the uh, holy grail of fish reproduction in terms of uh, as an industry, what we'd like to do. So I, yeah. I work very closely with lots of other people all over the world and trying to crack the nut on this animal. So you can move to the next one. No, I can't. We do no. need to move along. But I want to mention the one thing you told me once. I remember we had a conversation about this leafy sea dragon. And you said, Mark, I have these dreams. And I will oh. dream that these leafy sea dragons have babies. You know, the, the eggs are on the yes. body of the male or something. And you said, and I'll come to work, and it's happened. So I, you know, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just waiting for that to happen. <laughs> yeah. It's happened yeah. in the past. I'm like, yeah. that's crazy. So yeah. you need to dream it, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. If you, yeah. <laughs> and uh, later you'll see my slide. If you can dream it, you can do it. Um, that's nice. <laughs> uh, but I don't care if it's me. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's the Dallas World Aquarium. I, I want to see that happen for the industry. And yeah. uh, and I believe that they're, I believe that it will, is what I'm yeah. going to say. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of really close calls and, and that's terribly exciting, but where, mm -hmm. what really gives us hope is the great success that has been had with the weedy sea dragon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we had one reproductive event with our weedies back in, uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was so excited. I rammed myself into a door and broke a rib, but oh that's God. another story. Yeah. I was running <laughs> to get my good cameras, like I said, but literally happened uh my boss called me mm -hmm. up he we had them in this tall cylinder tank with natural light yeah. and uh he said you need to come up here the weedies are acting weird and i said okay and i came up there and there was this this male was thrashing at the surface it's a 10 foot tall cylinder oh, tank no. and he was thrashing at the surface and i i looked and i just <laughs> Like, my God, he has eggs. And he was literally fertilizing the eggs. It was oh, that's so unbelievable. So I ran to get my good camera and the door didn't swing open. And I ran to my own uh, arm into my rib cage. Uh, wow. So, yeah. Uh, but, but honestly, there have been a number of aquariums that have had great success in breeding these, especially uh, in Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, are now, I believe, up to the third generation of 
captive born VDC dragons, which is really exciting. So, That's awesome. um, and where this success has come from mm -hmm. has been the collaborations between those who work with these animals. We share our knowledge. We have our own symposia uh, to share what we know and our, we share our successes. We share our failures um, that, you know, uh, great minds uh, when they get together uh, can do great things. Yeah. And um, so I, I'm hopeful um, that we'll see this type of success with the leafy sea dragons that we're seeing with the Wheaties. And mm -hmm. um, it's pretty exciting. Um, you can move to the next slide. Um, I'm not going to talk about, you know, much drama here. We've yeah. heard from, I, I wow, Kevin's uh, presentation earlier. Yeah, I, I forgot all about his biosecurity background, but um, <laughs> yeah. Um, what I will say is this, and I, I, I really believe this. Um, you need to really try to quarantine your fish in some capacity before putting them in your established aquarium. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I have been literally quarantine was my job uh when i worked at sea world for five years i've quarantined thousands of fish in my career yeah and if you try to shortcut things mm -hmm. it may work for a while but there's going to be a time when it backfires on you now this is something i literally just saw the other day um mm -hmm. it is probably a fluke it might be a nematode this picture mm -hmm. is terrible but it's the only one i had readily okay. today Mm -hmm. to say this is a this is an internal parasite right mm -hmm. um if fish are otherwise um healthy the water quality is good uh they get good nutrition um a parasite like this is probably not devastating one mm -hmm. or two inside the gut is yeah. not that unusual but if something else stresses it out if there's another parasite if then mm -hmm then these things tend to take over. And, mm -hmm. and I see so much on the forums, um, devastating things that happen in yeah. aquariums. Right. Um, and it breaks my heart. Uh, Todd touched on this. What can we do to help maintain our hobby? Um, we have a, I, I was going to put this on the slide, but I didn't. With great power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, we are keeping animals, uh, and therefore we owe it to them to do the best that we can for them. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think sometimes people see fish differently than they see other animals like their dog, cat, or bird. Right. Uh, but honestly, um, they're still a living animal. In many cases, they have come out of their natural environment into ours. Mm -hmm. um, and I truly believe that quarantine is a way that we uh, do our best um, for trying to maintain a healthy animal. And there are a million different ways to quarantine your fish, so I'm not here to tell anybody how to do it right. other than um, <laughs> I believe in it. <laughs> is what I'm going to say. I believe in it. And I, and I, and I think in the long run, it pays off. Did you tell um, us what this picture is of? I mean, what gut? So it Who's is, it is, it? it is a, it is of a, um, fat head antheus. Oh, um, okay. Yes. Right. And, um, hmm. yeah. And so, uh, this particular fish was finished with its regular, uh, time but had not yet been moved on to exhibit so this oh. will this will slow down the process um stays in quarantine yeah okay yeah got it so yep uh a video? so yes hover over this so things can and mark you live this 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 weekend things yeah. can and will happen when you least expect it but sometimes those things are happy accidents and um once upon a time, many years ago, um, uh, Lyle Squire from Cannes Marine uh, contacted us and said, hey, our collectors have found this amazing animal that we literally thought was a myth. We've been looking for it for 12 years. Do you think you'd be interested? 
Yeah. He sent us pictures. I did all kinds of research to try to figure out, you know, there's only one published account of, of this animal that I could find at the time. And uh, so we said, sure. So he sent us one. And we weren't sure if it was um, a fe- or I'm sorry. I think he sent us three, but they, it turned out they were all female. Mm-hmm. And um, I had to contact a gentleman that was at Texas A&M. He, yeah. uh, his name is Adam Jones. We, um, he had a lab at there. He's now in Colorado or I, Idaho, I believe. Um, and I said, you know, does this species have a pouch? Are they tail brooders? You know, how, how do these things reproduce? And he was like, I don't really know. There's only this one publication, right? So as it turned out, what we had was females. And Lyle was able to get a male. So if you click on that link, on that it won't thing, do anything. It won't, it won't play. <laughs> it won't That's do it. Weird. Can you just act it out for us? Huh? We'll make you full screen let so, you do it. <laughs> okay. So here, here's how it goes. Um, wait, wait. The, okay, we're going to make you bigger. Here we go. Okay, do it. <laughs> okay. In the, in, the, in the next slide, you'll see a photo of the pouch. But basically, the male has a pouch. Mm-hmm. And it, it it's like two cylinders uh-huh. like this and the, and the, the male opens this pouch right awesome so when the female deposits the eggs yeah it's like squeezing a tube of toothpaste into the inside of that pouch and <laughs> wow. they do it in the matter of seconds and uh-huh. they're done and you got that on film so and that's yeah. a terrible film we've gotten a better that that was just the one i had handy so yeah. here's the interesting thing mm-hmm we got a mail in mm-hmm. and two days, I'm not, this is not even an exaggeration. Two mm-hmm. days after that mail came to our facility, yeah. it was pregnant. <laughs> and <laughs> once again, I, I have a little dance that I do. Like when I'm so excited, like yeah. racing around, like, Oh my God, Oh my God, this thing's pregnant. It was, we, those animals arrived on August 29th Mm -hmm. of 2005. Now, I think we all know what happened on August 29th, 2005. Katrina happened. Oh, wow. Um, I know that date by heart. And (laughs) later, after we had some success with these animals, Mm -hmm. I was putting together a presentation because they have a a very storied history in the rock art in Australia. Mm -hmm. They are believed to be, they call them the rainbow serpent, right? They believe this, this animal is the actual rainbow serpent that some depictions show like a crocodile head and a body. These, they have, we've had as many as 1100 babies born, um, from these reproduction events. Um, but they believe that they bring in the rains, right? Mm -hmm. Or can cause catastrophic flooding. (laughs) So, uh, you know, the the terrible thing is, is that, you know, uh, you know, is that, is that a strange coincidence or not? I don't know. Uh, But it's really odd that all those things happen at the same time. Um, And we did have, um, uh, there's a, the image there shows you the, the, when the babies uh, hatch, uh, or are released from the pouch. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're about 12 millimeters long yeah. if they're healthy. Wow. Uh, and of course, when no one else has ever done this before, mm-hmm. you have no one to ask. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so as it turned out, we, we became successful in, in multiple reproductive events and in uh, also sending our offspring all over the world mm-hmm. um, and in sort of cracking the nut on, on how to raise these. Yeah. Um, uh, we learned so much. Mm-hmm. It's an amazing thing, but we had a lot of help. We had a mm-hmm. lot of help from copepod producers and, and live algae producers and, mm-hmm. and aquaculture folks. And, mm-hmm. um, again, a, a happy accident, uh, something we didn't expect. Um, and, um, something that we learned a, a lot from. So, mm-hmm. um, just when you think, you know, nothing's ever going to change, you know, one day it does and the whole world you know changed so yeah it's you know i lead a gilded life but you know again (laughs) um part part of that reason or the 
really the whole reason is mm -hmm. that I have a director who's not afraid to take a risk, who is not afraid to put his money where his mouth is yeah. and, and, um, and do whatever it takes to, um, um, you know, see things through. And, yeah. and I'm very fortunate to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Next slide. Uh, mm -hmm. Knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard a lot today about from all the speakers about what books they read, who, who, who they talked to, who their mentors are. I think on, on reef builders the other day, they were asking who was your mentor, right? I have too many of them to, mm -hmm. to say, um, I just picked a few pictures here. Uh, this was actually from reef stock, um, mm -hmm. where I was invited to speak a couple of years ago, but I will say this about the folks that we know, like you, Mark, mm -hmm. like, all of the speakers that we see all the time. Um, I can't express how important it is to do your research um, before you buy your animals or buy your tank or whatever you're going to do, right. but also the collective knowledge that this industry possesses mm -hmm. is tremendous. And, and we have grown so much from it because people are willing to share not only their successes, but their failures uh, they're willing to knock their heads together. They're making products and, and doing things that improve uh, the husbandry of our animals. Yeah. And um, so I was so fortunate to have uh, been able to be around these people. And, yeah. um, and I, I, you know, I think the rest of, I think, uh, you know, we have lost some greats in the past mm -hmm. few years yeah. and uh, that's, hard. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what's beautiful about it is that because these individuals have shared their knowledge in such a platform and, right. and these things are recorded and they're online and they're, yeah. you know, you look at wet, wet media, media, you look at all right. the reef builder videos, you look at, you know, all the things that they they live, their mm -hmm. legacy is still living to this day. Yep. And, and I, I think it's fascinating and, I, it's and I'm thrilled to, to be able to be around this. And I think that today's Aquarius are so lucky yeah. that they have such access to this information. Um, my mother, uh, I mean, my mother, my son asked me once, you know, what do you want to happen when you, you know, when you die? What do you want? Do you want me to take over the shop? What do you want me to do? I said, actually, that's why you should pay for the website and keep the information there. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep yeah. me the going. Disable yeah. the shop so you don't get upset customers who are like, where's my sump? But, you know, yeah. if you could at least keep the blogs and the articles there forever, that would make me uh, a happy yeah. little, well, yeah. I don't know. I assume I'm going to be in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting Wherever to think, I what am. am I going to do with all, who, which of my children is going to inherit my books? And will right. they, what will they do with them? Or should they go to some library yeah, somewhere? Yeah. I don't know. I uh, joked you, about my son yeah. should turn me into a piece of live rock and then put me, in, you know, do, yeah. you know, yeah. do the thing and then put me in a you tank and make sure I don't get any aptasia on me. <laughs> oh, I, I'd be loaded with Aptasia. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, okay, you can move to the next slide. Okay. So, uh, again, this is just going back to yep. the collective knowledge. Right. Uh, Joe and Sanjay came to visit during Aquashella this mm -hmm. year, and Joe took this picture and sent it to me, and mm -hmm. I just thought it was classic. I yeah. just thought it was beautiful. But, you know, any chance I can to show a sawfish, I'm, I'm going to. So. I know that. I know. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, knowledge is power and there's no such thing as a stupid question. Right. Um, if I had one plea, mm -hmm. uh, to share, I, you know, I, I, I loved what Todd was sharing. Um, mm -hmm. several people have said, you know, I, I would say, please be nice on the forums. Yeah. Um, please be nice on the forums. Yeah. Um, we all are in this together mm -hmm. and we need each other. Yeah. And if people leave because they feel like they're getting beat up when they mm -hmm. ask a question. Uh, I, I don't think that's what we really want for this business. So um, that's my, that's my grandmother's, uh, my grandmotherly advice. Please be kind on the forums when people are asking questions, especially if someone is new to this yeah. business. Uh, no, I totally find, agree. Yeah. I totally yeah. Agree. Uh, okay. Next, next slide. Okay. So these are things that I didn't necessarily have a picture or a video for uh, that related, but these are just things that I think all of us can say, 
hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark, you have lived this um, <laughs> yeah. in so many ways. I know. Uh, anybody who lives on the coast and we're watching these hurricanes, um, you know, I don't care. We had a snow apocalypse in Dallas, yep. mm -hmm. um, you know, that we didn't expect, right? Never in, had it in our business, in the in the in the zoo and aquarium world, we have contingency plans right. that that are like, where are you going to get your gas if the entire city block yep. shuts down, right? Yep. You know, so it's um, you hope you never ever have to use it, yeah. but what are your plans, right? Yep. Uh, and then this is an old, but check, double check, recheck. Uh, I'm not talking to any life support today. Right. We, d we do things very differently than a lot of people. And, and like I said, there's a million ways to do it right. So I'm not, not here to tell you how to do that. Right. Uh, but boy, check it. Double yeah. check it. Recheck it. Come in the morning. Check your temperature. Check it when you feed it in the middle of the day. Check yeah. it later in the day. Right. Check your sun. You know, you got a leak. Check it again. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. and, and this may or may not be true anymore. Uh, but sometimes it is, you get what you pay for. Yeah. Um, in, in part of the hobby, you can swap your frags for free and that's great. And, yeah. and so, you know, that wouldn't be true. But sometimes if you're trying to cut corners, uh, that can yeah. be a problem. Yes. Um, this, is, this is the truth, I think. And anybody that works with live animals, there's never a dull moment. Right. Um, if you're bored <laughs> in this, in this business or in this hobby you're mm -hmm. this may not be your hobby right mm -hmm. uh because i will in the morning get up and i ha i don't have a reef tank at home but i have uh i've started to do endlers live bears at home mm -hmm. as i spent a lifetime raising guppies as a kid mm -hmm. and i love them and i will get up in the morning and i will feed my fish and sit there for like 10 minutes and watch them you know mm -hmm. right like and i'm thinking man i wish i could just sit here and watch them you know, mm -hmm. sometimes I wish it worked. I could just sit and watch these fish um, mm -hmm. all day. So, yeah, there's never a dull moment. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is this kind of goes back to the forms, but don't believe everything you hear yeah. or read. Right. Uh, you need to take more than just one source yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Depends on oh, the source, man. right? Sometimes there's like a question and there's 20 different answers and I read them all. And then I tell the original poster, which one are you following? Yeah. <laughs> because there's no way you know what to go with. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think what I found on most of them is somebody's eventually going to say what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, somebody, somebody's going to get there. Uh, right. And there's an exception to every rule. Because I could sit here and tell you, you need to do it th this way. Yeah. But you heard from Tia earlier, the water is different wherever you are, right? You're, you're um, you know, just things are different in different places and it mm -hmm. you know it's it's not always going to be the same so right. um and then i i'll go back to dan my my original boss in this business and uh -huh. um this is something he would say a lot of time yes yeah. you can't save people from themselves yeah i've heard that too. um and sometimes you can give them all the best advice in the whole wide world you can tell them everything you can teach them everything you know uh they're going to do it and you know that's it. People are gonna gonna make their own mistakes. So yeah. sometimes you just have to say you can't save people from themselves. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> poor Mark, he waited all day for me to get him my presentation. And this is very funny. But uh, when I went through what I finally uploaded to you, yeah. uh -huh. well, I crossed out the you can't yeah. to put can you can teach an old dog new tricks. Right, but right. what I said originally was, you can teach a new dog, old tricks. <laughs> and then I went back and I read it and I was like, okay, well that's not right. And, yeah. and the old dog that I'm talking about is me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I, I never, uh, ever, I'm going to say this. I never really ever consider myself a coral aquarist. I am mm -hmm. a, I am a, um, mega, mega vertebrate, uh, -huh. uh fancy fish girl yeah, right. uh but i am not i will say this i didn't ever think i would be anyway mm -hmm. a, a coral person yeah you have to be that whether you like like it or not when you right. work in my business yes. um <laughs> and i never thought that i would do i was always very interested in aquaculture the ribbon dragon thing sort of happened right and 
the um, the uh, learning curve for aquaculturing things and culturing copepods and things mm -hmm. like that. I did not think that I had that sort of talent yeah. and I still don't frankly, but mm -hmm. I have learned a lot. And mm -hmm. so what I have learned is that yes, you can teach an old dog new tricks. Um, there, you know, it's not easy, uh, but you can. And, uh, this is so, so this is sort of our new trick. We have this amazing aquaculture lab. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we put it on pause, uh, while we had some big projects going over this past year. So from August of last year until now, we literally have had it on pause. Um, but there was a time when we were raising actually three species of coke pods mm -hmm. and you can actually see on the top, we have these amazing uh, larval rearing systems and grow out system. We have all these bats for um, copepods. Yeah. And uh, I had gotten some really great advice from the Steinhardt Aquarium mm -hmm. on raising how they raise their parvo, for example. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, that makes sense. Well, I can't really do it that way, but maybe I'll tweak it and do it this way. And it ended up working. So for a while, we had three different species of copepods going mm -hmm. really well, um, which was kind of shocking to me because, right. frankly, I never thought I could do that. I, yeah, I yeah. just, it's just not, I just really don't think that that's, you know, my bag of tricks. But I, I figured out how to do it, and we all figured it out as a team at the aquarium, and, and it was very exciting. So that's it. Um, now you can do yeah. uh, weedies so, and sea dragons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, yep. uh, what I, what I don't even try to do. Wow. That looks good. Is our algae lab. Mm -hmm. Uh, because if you're doing the algae, you really shouldn't be doing the copepods and vice versa because of the whole biosecurity and cross contamination thing. So yep. one yep. of our aquarists is really good at this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so what I don't have a picture of, cause I won't go in the room. Yes. Uh, there's another room to the side of that mm -hmm. where the algae stock cultures are. Right. Okay. So, yeah. um, so this is a realm that I, you know, you got to set your limits. I won't, I, I, you know, <laughs> this is someone else's got yeah. this talent. It's not Paula. And, uh, I'm, I'm happy to support whoever it is, but it's not, it's not. So we actually have an, of course, uh, named Luke who's doing this and he's, yeah. he's been quite good at it. Awesome. So. Great. Uh, and, but he had excellent training and, um, from people who knew what they're doing. So mm -hmm. that's great. But I wasn't that person. Yeah. Um, but all, all of that, is leading to this. Mm -hmm. If you can dream it, you can do it. <gasps> what did you do? Well, we haven't done it yet, but we're going to do it. You're I mean, close, we have, aren't you? We have, but we haven't done it. So right. back in, uh, I don't know, 2015, 2016, we started mm -hmm. to notice that our uh, flashlight fish were spawning. And Which we is insane she, because it's pitch dark. I don't know how yeah. you'd know this. <laughs> she, you could actually see them. It was fascinating. Oh, of um, course. Swimming so out. that Aquarist, you know, had some, she had actually gone to the Roger Williams yeah. program. So she mm -hmm. knew what she was doing. And um, she actually gave a presentation at RAW about yeah. our, our breeding. And, and we were, tr we didn't have our fancy aquaculture thing. We, we, mm -hmm. we, we did get a, a molar system mm -hmm. and uh, we were trying all kinds of different things in, in the most rudimentary way. And we're able to get the fish to like eight or nine days post hatch. So, uh, I, part of that was what sort of prompted our director to want to do more. So if you'll, if you'll, uh, hit the next slide, okay. um, we have, he funded the most amazing equipment for us and, and we have access to great, uh, microscope and tools yeah. so we can see these things. But, Right now, we've been able to get these uh, flashlight fish to 12 days. Um, nice. Our challenge has been, and I've, I've driven so many people crazy with this, showing them videos. I can right. tell you, yeah. uh, we've tried everything under the sun right. before we had to put the program on pause. Mm. Um, but uh, this, is, this is a, uh, I think this animal's probably five or six days post hatch, but you'll see there's not really much going on in the gut there. You sure it's um, not a nudibranch? <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you go to the next one and hope the video will play, Mark, right. um, if you yes, wave me up. So they are the coolest, <laughs> coolest little animals. Um, they look like they're feeding, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
when they start to grow, they get sort of white on the back end like that as they yeah. sort of stretch out. So we're excited to see uh, once we gear this back up, we, we've been sort of uh, surveying the spawning. We got a, a new group of animals um, from Australia, which is really exciting, the new brood stock. Um, and so we're um, just every now and then, uh, collecting eggs, counting the eggs, uh, making sure they're viable. And, mm -hmm. and once we've got all the food back up and going, then we'll get back at this um, hot and heavy. So, so I'm excited. Cute. But yeah, that's if so at first neat. you don't succeed, try, try again. Yeah. So that's what we're going to just do. keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so, nice. uh, okay, next slide. Um, Mark, this one is just for you. Wow. Um, and and uh, Jason, wow. if he's on the call. Oh, I'm sure um, he is. <laughs> uh, so in with our flashlight fish while they were spawning like crazy, yeah. we had a pair of Japanese angels mm -hmm. and, uh, those Japanese angels, I'm sorry, Mark, but they're me when they get big and, um, <laughs> but they spawn like crazy and their eggs are really tiny and they gunk mm -hmm. up, they gunk up, uh, the nets and stuff for the flashlight fish. Yeah. Uh, fortunately we're able to catch them and move them out of there, but um, this one day, it's another happy accident. Just, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking at flashlight fish. I'm counting flashlight fish eggs. Yeah. Um, and, and here's a little larvae from a, uh, Japanese angel fish. Yeah. Uh, Listen, which... um, Dwayne's been here since yesterday when he showed up, he was wearing the Mazna shirt. Now, I don't know yeah. if you remember the Mazna shirt, but the Mazna shirt has the conspic on the front and an angel. Yeah. And this and that. It's yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's just looking at my little flare and she is not just swimming like she always does in that tank. I mean, she never stays still ever. She's right. staring him straight on and twitching her tail. And yeah. he's like, I think she's mad at me. And I'm yep. like, what are you talking about? Yeah. She's, that's what she does. He goes, no, no, she's twitching. She's upset. Yeah. And we realized she saw the conspic on, on his the, shirt. On his shirt. And it was like, yep. nope. And yep. it was crazy. She yep. was defending yep. her little 27-gallon territory. They are so beautiful. But when yeah. they get big, wow. They're, well, we'll they're find something. out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, okay, you can on move on to done. the next one. Yep. Uh, okay, so another happy accident. <laughs> uh, we had gotten some uh, blue Hanagobis from Japan, mm -hmm. one of our suppliers, and, and put them in holding mm -hmm. with the intention of just seeing how they, how they did, learning yeah. about them you know, as much as we could, yeah. and then they started to breed. Yeah. Um, so if you click on the, the, big the, one. Um, the, the video on the bottom there, you can see both the male and female, and I oh. frankly cannot tell the difference between them. They don't mm -hmm. sit still long enough for you to get a really good picture and see what's going on. Yeah. Um, but they lay these clusters of eggs. Yeah. These are just milk crates. Um, yeah. And as the eggs uh, start to develop, they turn blue, which is really cool. Huh. Okay. But when they hatch, there's thousands and thousands of them. And they're oh. really tiny, and the larvae are incredibly fragile. Yeah. Um, is that yellow moved... stuff called an egg graft? Uh, that is a question for someone else because I don't know. But okay. yeah, I would but say egg eggs. mass, egg, egg graft. Mass. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Why and I mean... we've seen them do it in in these tall milk crates. We've yes. also seen them do it in a pipe, right? And mm -hmm. I did I did see a video of of, of a hobbyist that had mm -hmm. some success yeah. uh, with theirs. Um, we have not tried really hard at all to raise these mainly because we were focusing all of our attention on the flashlight fish and our mm -hmm. food and resources right. and whatnot. But yeah. we have moved a group of these on exhibit and mm -hmm. they're just beautiful in our Japan exhibit. They are nice. spectacular fish. Yeah. Uh, next slide. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have had in our Lord Howe Island exhibit for all of the time that I have been there, uh, we have had Macaulay clowns and Laddies and Adis clowns. And uh, in the past, we have had success in, in raising our, our Laddies and Natives clowns. Right. Um, we have not made a whole lot of attempts at our McCulloughi clowns, right. uh, but this is something that the director brings up every now and then, just <laughs> because um, our population is getting older. Mm. Um, and uh, so, but if um, you can, any given time, you can yeah. look in our reef tanks where there are clownfish and almost every two weeks without fail, our There's clownfish are, are spawning. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It just, and it's fascinating and fun to watch. Yeah. Um, it's great to point it out and you can see them taking care of the, taking care of the Looks great. babies. Yeah. 
yeah, this is a little Malu anemone. Yeah, uh, pretty. Yeah. I like the purple tips. So, yeah, yeah it's, nice. it's a beautiful fish. Um, yeah. yeah, so pretty cool. These Which are the things like. This is in the Lord Howe Island exhibit. Oh, nice. Okay, so that was Lord the team of the conspics. Yes, that is what the conspics are. So uh -huh. that uh, they are Lord Howe Island. If you don't know, is off mm -hmm. the coast of Australia. It's seven miles long and two miles wide. It's yeah. considered a pest-free paradise, and mm -hmm. it's the southernmost uh, coral reef. So the temperatures are cooler there. Mm -hmm. um, the the colors are a little bit muted compared to some of the other reefs, and mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we were very fortunate to have um, fish from that area. Nice. So another happy accident. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Yeah. And um, I don't know where these came from. My suspicion is they come in with the live mice and shrimp that we mm. fly in twice a week from Florida to feed our um, sea dragons and mm -hmm. our seahorses. They get all live food. Yeah. And um, Every now and then I siphon one of these out yeah. of the um, display of the display. And I'm assuming they, they came in with the mice and shrimp. Huh. So one day I thought, you know what, I'm going to just take a really good look at this <laughs> uh, and figure out what it is. Yeah. And I did. It's called a clinging jelly. It sticks to everything that you <laughs> try. It's about the size of a quarter or less. Maybe okay. a nickel is a better description. Yeah really cool amazing little jelly yeah, so cool. i thought well let me see if you know we can keep this thing alive now it had come out of 58 degree water and yeah. and we were keeping it in warmer water and yeah. i will tell you this little booger um it's amazing they'll eat a mice and shrimp yeah. like you can't imagine it's the coolest thing in the world to watch them snag it and eat it <laughs> um or a, a tiny little paleo yeah. um and so I don't know if we'll ever try to display these. They're actually mm. an invasive species on the mm. East Coast okay. of the United States. And, and I think they were introduced a long time ago. And it, I think they originated in Japan or someplace like that. I'm sure they came in on boats or something because mm. they, I mean, they literally stick, stick to everything. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they're, they're just really fascinating and beautiful. Uh, so, yeah, they, I mean, you know, who knew, right? Yeah. Um, Hey, and can I course, just ask you, how far along are sure. we in your slides? Because Brian, I mean, uh, uh, Brian, yeah, Brian's in the green room. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just curious. All right. We can race through them. I don't know. I honestly can't remember. So uh, <laughs> okay. another cliche, variety is the spice of life. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide uh, our animals with a lot of enrichment. In, mm -hmm. in, in the exhibit itself, in, uh, sometimes we do food enrichment. Sometimes mm -hmm. we do flow enrichment. Sometimes we do light enrichment. Uh, this is a picture of enrichment gone wrong when the octopus is finished getting it, whatever it wants out of the hamster ball. Sometimes right. it ends up in the anemones, but the oh, funny, that's what that is. The, yeah. The funny thing is that the anemone <laughs> wow. will spit that back out and be oh, totally fine. It's yeah. just weird. And if you'll hover the, over the octopus, who doesn't want to see a beautiful giant Pacific octopus? Oh, nice. um, yeah. yeah. Gorgeous so, creature. And that's the yeah, 55, just, gallon tank, 55 temperature tank? 55 degrees? Actually, we keep this at about 48 or 49 degrees. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Brr. Yeah. Next, next slide. Beautiful. I think we are getting close, Mark. Okay. Uh, my favorite saying is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Um, that doesn't mean you can't tweak it. Yeah. Uh, but don't change everything if yeah. things are doing well and you have one thing that's not doing well. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, caution, um, sometimes is the yeah is the best method uh you can you can move on to the next one because yeah. i think you've heard that from a lot of people today yeah uh this is just more if it ain't broke don't fix it yeah. now i can tell you uh, this looks really great but if you were to look to the right you'd see some aptasia you know <laughs> yeah. uh i'd like to see more color in that clam yeah. but this tank has been established since 1997. that's the big um, one across from the restaurant right yes yeah yeah. So, and I will say this, and I say this a lot, the mm. hardest animal in the world to keep is a giant clam. I was going to say the clams. You have told, don't you've told like, me, yeah. you've, you've said to me so many times, if I just look at it wrong, it dies. <laughs> they don't like it when you change things. Yeah. And this whole lighting 
uh, yeah. we, you know, thing is I, I liked what Tia had to say about the halides. There are just some things that do better with halides. Yeah. And in, in our exhibits that are five feet deep and, right. you know, it, it, it's tricky. They're, to yeah. me, they're the hardest animal. Yeah. Uh, just another really beautiful. This is this clownfish has been at the aquarium since before I started there. This oh, came in, uh, and I always have to put a old. plug in for my <laughs> beloved cowboys. But it shares this exhibit with yeah. uh, two scopus tangs that belonged to Jimmy Johnson oh, wow. that he gave to our director in 1993. He actually came back to visit a couple years ago, and I actually took him down and showed him the tank. So pretty cool. Thirty yeah. years ago. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Uh, and then my one of my all-time faves, and Tal, if Tal's on the on the on the feed, mm -hmm. he knows how much I love Antheus. But you can hit that video, Mark. Oh, uh, we sure. got in some beautiful purple square Antheus from Cans Marine, yeah. and they went through quarantine like nobody's business. And yes. they are beautiful, awesome. and have established themselves in our New Guinea exhibit. So they're so yes. beautiful. Next, next slide. Uh, and then my all-time favorite is, this is a video too, is the okay. Ignitus Antheus. Um, yeah. We have collected some eggs from these, but I haven't seen uh, any development yet. So yeah. stay tuned. That, that that's pretty. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, God. You're lucky you get to have so many at once. We have to buy our fish one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> you get to get these your 15. <laughs> these were quarantined in a thousand gallon holding wow. where the blue haunted gobies are now. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. Just so fish. vivid. Man, yeah, I, don't even just, want to, I don't even stop the video. I'm going to have to come yeah. and visit them. Um, and then uh, I, several people touched on this today. Mm -hmm. um, early on in my career, one of my early mentors who, was, who spent a career at the Waikiki Aquarium after he left SeaWorld yeah. said to me, we have an obligation to learn as much as we can about these animals and share it. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that. Yeah. Um, this happens to be two of my granddaughters and my daughter-in-law and mm -hmm. my, my youngest granddaughter, Ruby, mm -hmm. uh, and her very first visit to the aquarium. That's awesome. And so uh, I, I do believe this, that people feel a connection with these living animals yeah. and, and that's the, the connection is what's going to save them. Because awesome. we have to feel connected of course. Uh, in some way. Yeah. Yep. And uh, next next slide. Uh, and then, of course, who didn't want to see this beautiful manatee, <laughs> Ajarami, because she's adorable. Um, but this is our big river exhibit. Um, yeah. And and I will say this, Antillian manatees go into both fresh and salt water, so I'm not really stretching. Do you call those and, big whiskery fish Sylvester and, you know... <laughs> <laughs> oh lord I know the uh, cat yeah family. <laughs> don't i won't get on this soapbox but but please don't buy fish that will outgrow your home aquarium oh yeah of course uh and these will and they'll yeah. break it and then you'll be calling someone to have it i so, wouldn't buy it uh, anyway because that's fresh water but anyway yeah okay. yeah next next slide and then uh teaching an old dog new tricks mm -hmm. um sometimes you learn you know it's from the mouths of babes right yeah. but uh we have this amazing intern named Ricky. Mm -hmm. And Ricky had a dream for a planted aquarium. Oh, nice. Uh, and Ricky this summer got to see his dream come to life in our tribal gallery. And uh, we have just ordered the first fish to go into our newly beautiful planted aquarium. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, stay tuned because nice. uh, this, yeah, this is, uh, this is, this it is looks really, really clean. Looks good. Yeah, and I basically hey! told him. Yeah, it was it was a mic drop. Uh, but thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me. Such an honor to to be oh. with the the group that I've seen today. Uh, the talks have been just knocked out of the park. Every single one of them. So I, I'm humbled, and I I don't even feel worthy, frankly. But um, thank you for all the things, all the time. Uh, and then that man standing behind us is my yeah. husband. I know it is. Yes. <laughs> who is in charge of the life support at the Dallas yeah, World Aquarium. He and he support. is the hardest working human being that I know. And I am also not worthy of him. So, hey, listen, uh, I, uh, I did not want to not have Paula on Markna. And she says, Mark, I'm at a conference. I'm in charge of a whole group. And I'm like, I don't care. I want you at night. I, we, we got to pencil you in. You cannot be busy at this conference. <coughs> and she's like, Mark, but, I haven't had time for the presentation. I've yeah, got a crisis going yeah, on at the, yeah. at the aquarium. Yeah. But we still had so, you on. Yeah. Thank you for squeezing us in. Yeah. I hope you get to eat a sandwich well, before you go to you. sleep. Uh, and, and honestly, thanks to my 
my boss mm -hmm. and the incredible staff at the Dallas World Aquarium. We, we are a small yeah. but mighty group of people. No, uh, and I, I agree. it's my great honor to, to be a part of it. Yeah, no, everyone needs to go to the Dallas World Aquarium. If you're in, if you come to Dallas Fort Worth area, you got to go to that aquarium. It's three stories. It's a rainforest something. Well, not really raining. I guess it is. Oh, yeah. and I, I, will f I forgot to mention that mm -hmm. we are in the process of hiring a freshwater aquarist. So if those planted tanks mm -hmm. are up your alley, the, send you us know. an email. Nice. Uh, and we also are looking for our, our, our future aquaculture uh, person. So. Awesome. Okay. All right. I got to end this thing. Thank you, Mark. Brian, Bye. Brian's been waiting so patient. Go. Everyone, Bye -bye. we are ending this stream. We will start another here in a couple of minutes with Brian. Thank you so much, Paula. And I hope you have a, good, a tr safe trip coming home. Bye, guys. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mark. Glad you got your power. <laughs> Me too.